and it's my honor to uh, to introduce Congressman Michael Waltz. And if you would like to turn on your uh, webcam after I finish your introduction, uh, Congressman Michael Waltz represents Florida's beautiful sixth congressional district, which includes Flagler, Volusia counties, as well as portions of Lake and St. John's counties. He's a proud Florida native, combat decorated Green Beret, former White House and Pentagon policy advisor, small business owner, and proud father. He said that when he came to Washington in 2019, he brought that warrior spirit with him, meaning that he serves with everything he has without regard for self and with a sense of duty. And it meant he was determined to be part of a what he called a new generation of leadership in Congress, servant leaders who lead by example with their values and who deliver results. Uh, Congressman Waltz, would you join us on screen and turn on your audio as well? Congressman, we're so pleased to have you join us. You co-founded the WPS caucus in the House. So what caused you to step up to the plate and take on this leadership role? What was it and, and how does that caucus interact with the, uh, the committees that have jurisdiction over this issue? Welcome. The answer is, is pretty straightforward from my perspective, where women thrive around the world, where they thrive in business, in civil society, uh, in politics. We don't tend to have an overwhelming extremism problem. I mean, where we, women thrive, the extremists don't. Uh, and if you look at case studies, which we could probably take hours to do around the world for that to be the case, but that's just, uh, you know, that's just been my experience. My experience has been as a, as a Green Beret, just hit 24 years uh, in the Army, still going in the National Guard, which means I'm still jumping out of perfectly good airplanes. But uh, it, from West Africa, Senegal, Niger, Nigeria, to, uh, to multiple tours in Afghanistan and lots of places in between, I found at the village level, at the community level, at the country level, and I dare say at the global level, uh, that basic premise to be true, not to oversimplify, but where, again, where women thrive, the extremists don't, and you tend to find a more stable uh, and uh, more coherent and cogent uh, uh, society, and, and regardless of ethnicity or regardless of other factors that are coming in. So for me, in my own experience, and then bringing this to Congress on the Armed Services Committee, on the Science, Space, and Technology Committee, that, uh, of course, uh, uh, educating girls, helping women uh, in a lot of these conflict zones and a lot of these semi-permissive environments is a humanitarian issue that the United States should always take a leadership role in. However, to, in my view, it is absolutely a national security issue. And so what I love about the WPS is that it takes a much more systematic approach. It knits together a lot of very disparate efforts. There is a heavy component, which uh, I understand you'll hear about later from the Defense Department, that also recognizes this to be the case. And again, I've seen this from female engagement teams uh, that accompanied our Green Berets to be able to engage a whole other part of, uh, of society uh, in women that I was, uh, for cultural reasons, kind of precluded from engaging. That's a, out of the village level. But this takes it to a kind of country to country, um, you know, all of government and even military to military, uh, um, much higher and much more strategic level. And we'll see that, and I'm sure you'll hear that in the Defense Department, and again, on armed services, when these WPS initiatives, whether we are training foreign forces or selling arms or conducting exercises, need to be spread uh, throughout everything that we do. So uh, I want to bring you to something you mentioned about uh, um, the the caucus and your work on the Armed Services Committee. Uh, you know, when Congress was considering this law in 2017, uh, they estimated that it would cost an additional $500,000 all the way through 2022. Uh, so quite a bargain. But in fact, uh, Congress has been very generous with this legislation in implementing it in the last couple of years. And I was wondering why you think that is. Well, number one, it's 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 a bipartisan issue, and and just to kind of level set, 
you know, the initial score uh, was so low in terms of the cost of this at 500,000, because really it was an administrative function to pull together a number of existing programs. Uh, I am proud of the fact that what is required in an F in a FY14 law is no less than 50 million to be put forward towards uh, various initiatives for, again, for girls' education, for women's empowerment, but uh, I was part of the vote to get 165 million. Uh, again, these are a lot of existing programs and what WPS does is pull it together and make it part of a broader strategic issue at the cabinet level, whether that's treasury, whether that's OPIC, uh, the defense department, the commerce department, the state department, of course, USAID, of course, and to take a much more concerted and broad strategic uh, approach. And the Trump administration, to its credit, has really taken this on as a priority. Uh, Ivanka Trump has the uh, WGDP initiative, which takes a bit more of an economic approach and looks at women entrepreneurship uh, mm -hmm. and business owners and how women are, again, often a stabilizing factor at the family level, the village level. And then what we need to do is elevate that uh, and empower them to elevate that at the country level. And you know, I just want to say, uh, it, one, given the administration credit for taking that on at the most senior levels in, in the White House, but number two, now that I'm in this role as a congressman, you know, we need to, as elected leaders, explain to folks, it is not always, and it is not always easy to do, why these initiatives overseas are so important. When you're standing in front of a town hall, uh, and you have constituents whose own daughters are going to underprivileged or underserved schools and maybe hitting three potholes uh, on the way there, it's, it's sometimes difficult to explain why we're sending money abroad to educate girls and empower women over there. But the, you know, again, when, when girls and women are empowered abroad, it makes their daughters safer at home. And when the world is more stabilized abroad, it makes the entire world, including our families here in Florida, more prosperous. But we have to continue to make that case. Uh, and I'm proud, I'm, I'm proud to do so uh, as a Republican and as a conservative. And what I love about a lot of the approach here is it's a bottoms up approach. Again, I, I'm saying it to the blue in the face, but it is a family, village, community level approach that then gets elevated upwards and, you know, it, where people take on personal responsibility, where we focus on entrepreneurship uh, and allow people, it get government, frankly, out of their way and out of uh, and out of these women's way as a means to to create a better life for their family's future. Right, but I, you couldn't pretty much encapsulate women, peace, and security better than you just did. Um, I guess one question is, how do you keep it bipartisan? I mean, if if support really requires bipartisanship, how is the caucus and how are you going to keep this issue going forward to make sure it gets that kind of support? Well, you know, again, I'm happy to work with my my wing woman. On, on this, uh, uh, Lois Frankel, and you know, it's easy to go to Congress and focus on what you disagree on. And Congresswoman Frankel and I disagree on a lot. Uh, but you know, you have, it's a concerted effort to come together uh, and to find common ground. Uh, and I, you know, in addition to this caucus, I co-founded a, a caucus called Four Country, which are post 9-11 veterans, Republicans and Democrats, who have seen what I've described uh, all over the world. And it's one of the reasons I think we need to get more veterans in uh, on both sides of the aisle, because, you know, when you've experienced it firsthand, when you've seen, as I have, an elementary school get machine gunned, uh, literally, uh, by extremists because they're teaching girls, that has a real impact. And as the father of a 16-year-old daughter, that's, you know, that's not a world. I don't ever want that happening here at home. And I don't ever want her to be threatened here at home. And again, you know, I want her to know about people, about strong women like Malala Yousafzai that we all should be talking about. And every, uh, you know, every young American girl should know uh, that she was willing to risk her life uh, just to have her own, just to have an education. And her family stood behind her because uh, abroad, when you take those kind of risks, you're putting your entire family at risk. So that's an environment to me that is a worthwhile effort. Uh, and, and one that we, we really have to show leadership on uh, in the Congress. And, and that, that there's just no politics there. 
the, the enemy's bullets and the extremists don't know Republican or Democrat. They don't know black, white, or brown. Uh, they just know their own warped version uh, of, of the world. And that's something we as Americans have to stand up against. Well said. I, it seems like this we're in good hands in Congress, and we hope it continues. We wish you well with the caucus, and uh, we are so grateful that you came on today to kick us off. Uh, thank you, and best of luck in November. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, you know, we get we get that um, that job satisfaction survey uh, every two years, and that's our system. Let's all pray for a for a good, healthy, clean election. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, sir.